and welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Jack. Today, I'm going to demonstrate a technique I use to calibrate a spatial light modulator, or SLM for short. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a collimated 532 nanometer light source, set so its output power is less than 2 milliwatts, a beam expander, a linear polarizer, a half wave plate, a reflective spatial light modulator, a camera, and power meter and sensor. Typically, most SLMs are calibrated by the manufacturer for a single set of operating conditions. For example, a single laser wavelength with one angle of incidence and under specific ambient conditions. However, the performance of an SLM can change based on the operating conditions. So it can be considered good practice to perform your own calibration to ensure the device is behaving the way that you expect. The calibration technique that I use only requires the addition of a camera to a typical setup. Additionally, I'll be showing two calibration curves created for different wavelengths within the same setup. Before we begin, I'd like to talk a little bit about how an SLM works and the calibration approach that I'll be using. The liquid crystal on silicon spatial light modulator is closely related to liquid crystal displays. Light is transmitted through a protective glass cover, transparent electrode layer, and into a liquid crystal layer. After reflecting from a mirror coating behind the liquid crystal layer, the light passes back through the three layers and exits the SLM. On the other side of the mirror coating is an array of electrodes which divide the liquid crystal layer into individual pixels that can be controlled independently of one another. The control is provided by silicon-based circuitry that customizes the voltage applied across each pixel. The voltage applied across a liquid crystal pixel controls the refractive index of the light in that pixel. As the refractive index increases, it takes longer for the wave to make a round trip through the liquid crystal layer. This increases the phase delay of the output wave. SLMs modulate phase delay over a limited range such as 2 pi or 4 pi. The control interface typically divides the total range into discrete steps so that the minimum possible phase change is limited by the minimum step size. Often, the total number of steps is a power of 2 and described by the bit depth. For example, an SLM with a range divided into 256 steps has a bit depth of 8, since 2 to the 8th power is equal to 256. By convention, each step in the range is identified with a particular shade of gray. For example, a 2 pi phase range for an SLM with an 8 bit depth is usually labeled using 256 different shades of gray, numbered from 0 to 255. Using grayscale values to represent different phase delays is helpful to create two dimensional phase delay patterns to upload to the SLM, as well as interpreting the effect a pattern will have on the incident light. For example, uploading this pattern which is just the same shade of gray at each pixel, results in the SLM reflecting the incident light along the optical axis of the setup like a mirror. Uploading a pattern of two alternating shades of gray and equal width bands creates a binary phase grading. The phase grading diffracts the incident light into multiple orders. Light in the zeroth order behaves like a beam reflected from the SLM and travels along the optical axis, while the diffracted orders travel at specific angles to the optical axis. The approach I use to calibrate the SLM applies a mirror phase pattern to the pixels on one half and a binary phase grading to the pixels on the other half. The light in the negative orders diffracted from the grating will overlap with the light reflected from the mirror side and form an interference pattern. When the majority of the light diffracted from the grating is in the first order, the interference pattern will consist of periodic fringes. Since these are the fringes I use in my calibration approach, I want to maximize the amount of light in the first diffracted order. 
The grading parameter that affects the amount of light diffracted into the different orders is the phase difference between the phase shifts provided by the dark and bright bands, or, as I call it, the step height in the grading. The maximum amount of light in the first diffracted order will be achieved when the phase difference is equal to pi. However, I typically need to perform the calibration to know the difference in grayscale values that provide a pi difference. So I generally use trial and error with a single phase applied to the mirror side to find two grayscale values on the grading side that provide the best fringe contrast. When the phase of the light reflected from the mirror side of the SLM changes, the light and dark areas of the interference fringes will shift, but the fringe period will stay the same. This relationship between shifts in the fringe positions and changes in the phase of the reflective light is the basis of my calibration approach. While I monitor the position of the fringes, I increment the phase of the mirror side over the entire range of the SLM. By applying grayscale values from 0 to 255, I can determine the relative phase shift associated with each value. Now, I'm going to construct my setup. I've already positioned my light source and beam expander such that the beam is centered on the SLM. After applying a single grayscale value to the SLM and turning on the laser, I can see a single reflected beam. Next, I'm going to improve the polarization extinction ratio of the light incident on the SLM by adding a linear polarizer. I want to align the transmission axis of this polarizer with the polarization state of the laser. I can do this by rotating the polarizer until it transmits maximum power. Next, I'm going to place my camera in the reflected beam path. I've estimated the camera should be placed about 29 centimeters from the SLM's display. Going to place the camera so that the reflected beam is centered on its aperture, and I will angle it so that its back reflection is centered on the SLM. Looking at my camera's image, I can see that it's not saturated, so I'm ready to apply my first calibration pattern to the SLM. I should now see vertical fringes on my camera. However, I don't see anything. This is because the polarization state incident on the SLM is not properly aligned to its liquid crystal array. By adding a half wave plate, I can rotate the polarization state without impacting the amount of light incident on the SLM. This looks a lot better, however, I want to see if I can improve the fringe contrast by rotating the half wave plate. That looks good. The fringe contrast can be further optimized by varying the step height in the phase grading. After trying a few different grayscale values, I found that 0 and 100 provide the best results. Additionally, the grading period may be changed to adjust the distance from the SLM the diffracted and reflected beams will overlap. A shorter grading period will result in shorter distances. 
However, the fringe period will also be shorter, which can potentially lead to undersampling. A longer grading period will result in longer distances. The fringe period will be longer, however, vibrations and air currents can potentially lead to the position of the fringes being unstable over time. In this case, I found a grading period of 4 pixels to be sufficient. Next, I'm going to adjust the tip tilt of the SLM display so that the overlap region is centered on the camera. While these fringes are very bright, they do not have a uniform period, which is necessary for analysis. Adjusting the horizontal adjuster and zooming in on this part of the image, I can see that the fringes have uniform period, which is exactly what I'm looking for. However, before I take any measurements, I want to see if I can improve their quality by adjusting the exposure time of the camera. Now that everything is aligned properly, I can record the fringe patterns necessary to perform calibration. Each calibration pattern has the same phase grading applied to the grading side. However, the grayscale value applied to the mirror side is incrementally increased from 0 to 255. The camera will capture an image corresponding to each calibration pattern. Once this is completed, I can analyze the images captured by the camera to determine the phase difference between each grayscale value. If I sequence the images from the data set into a video, I can see the fringes move horizontally across the screen. The fringes move each time the grayscale value of the mirror side is incremented because the phase delay of the reflected beam changes. In this case, total movement of the fringes is about one period. Various approaches can be used to analyze the data, such as curve fitting and Fourier analysis. For this demonstration, I'll be using a curve fitting approach. I need to analyze a line profile over a group of fringes with the same period. The more fringes within my line profile, the more accurately I'll be able to estimate the phase shift. First, I fit a cosine function to the intensity values along the line profile. This fit for grayscale value 0 provides a baseline reference curve. Next, I curve fit intensity values from the same line profile on the images taken for each grayscale value applied to the mirror side. For example, a grayscale value of 100. The difference between the phase of this curve and the reference curve is 2.97 radians. This means a grayscale value of 100 will provide a phase delay of 2.97 radians relative to a grayscale value of 0. And for a grayscale value of 200, the difference between the phase of this curve and the reference curve is 6.27 radians. This means a grayscale value of 200 will provide a phase delay of 6.27 radians relative to a grayscale value of 0. Once I have recorded all the phase delays, I can plot them against their corresponding grayscale value to obtain a calibration curve for this setup at 532 nanometers. I can now use this calibration curve to select the grayscale value for the phase delay needed at each pixel. I have previously calibrated this setup for a 633 nanometer laser. The biggest difference between these two curves is their slope. This means that for the same grayscale value, a pixel will provide a different phase delay depending on the wavelength of your laser. This example demonstrates how the performance of an SLM can change based on the operating conditions, and emphasizes why it may be important to calibrate an SLM to your setup. I hope this helps you in the lab someday. If you have any questions, feel free to contact tech support.